en país. Hey guys, what's happening? Niat here with Film Comics Explained, and today we'll be taking a look at the Sinister Martians featured in Tim Burton's 1996 classic, Mars Attacks, which was a sci-fi black comedy that saw aliens attempt to invade the planet Earth. The film, which features a star-studded cast including, but not limited to, Jack Nicholson, Glenn Close, Annette Bening, Pierce Brosnan, Danny DeVito, Martin Short, Michael J. Fox, and Natalie Portman, opened to mixed reviews due to its unique blend of style and comedy, but has since developed a cult following. The concept of Mars Attacks was actually developed in the 1960s by Topps as a series of trading cards that told the story of the invasion of Earth by a corrupt Martian government. And while the sci-fi series was popular among children, the company was forced to stop production when parents complained that the cards were too violent for their kids to see, leading to many reprints that reduced the graphic nature of the content down the line. With the sprawling success of the trading cards, the stories were then expanded into comic books and other merchandise before the idea for a film was pitched to Orion and TriStar Pictures in 1985. After a few drafts were written by Alex Cox, who'd initially pitched the concept for the film, Jonathan Gems, who'd written a handful of unproduced screenplays for Tim Burton, then wrote his own treatment for the film, which went into a more satirical direction, leading Burton to pitch the idea to Warner Brothers, who greenlit the film's production. Now, Mars Attacks essentially features an enigmatic race of aliens hailing from Mars that arrive on Earth and though their intentions were thought to have been peaceful, the planet would soon come to find that the species was nothing short of malevolent. Standing at a height of 4 to 5 feet, the Green Martians wore bodysuits with a protective glass case that surrounded their exposed and oversized brains. One thing I want you guys to take note of is how similar their body structure and skeletal faces were to human beings, with the aliens featuring bulging red eyes, a Voldemort-like nose, teeth, and even a voice box, suggesting that there may be some connection between both of our respective species, which is something I'll discuss later in this video. Their soldiers were armed with disintegrators of various forms that pulverized their enemies with ease, and the Martian leader also appeared to have a unique gun that enabled him to shrink objects to a fraction of their size, as seen with its application on one of the generals protecting the president. Their flying saucers also had massive heat rays of their own that could be used to destroy buildings in seconds, showing that the Martians were technologically superior beings, and highlighting how insignificantly outmatched we were against them. In fact, if it wasn't for their silly weakness to Slim Whitman's yodeling music, they would have pretty much wiped us out over the course of a single day. On that note, although they were pretty resistant to Earth weaponry, they could still be blasted with their own weapons, and since they couldn't actually breathe oxygen, all it really took was for the breaking of their fragile glass helmets to incapacitate them. Now, unlike the many iterations of Martians that have proliferated sci-fi culture, the aliens in Mars Attacks had no sense of remorse or mercy towards mankind, and they seemed to enjoy their continuous torment of the humans that they came across. They also seemed to have a curiosity with regards to how humans behaved and how they functioned on a physiological level, leading them to kidnap a number of people that they experiment on to disturbing and yet hilarious effect. Were you flirting with me on the show? Because if you were, I just want you to know that I liked it. <laughs> you did? Really? While their actions and behaviour would suggest that they were purely evil creatures, there's a major clue we get in the film as to their true intention and reasoning behind the invasion that most people overlook. During the movie, one of the human scientists develops a translator that transforms their strange and unintelligible acts into English, giving us the statement, All green of skin, 800 centuries ago, their bodily fluids include the birth of half-breeds. For the fundamental truth, self-determination of the cosmos, for dark is a swathe that mows like a harvest. While this doesn't seem to make sense at first, if we consider that this is a literal translation that doesn't take into account linguistic nuances of each respective language, and we interchange some of the words with synonyms to make more sense, the statement actually reads as, Martians, 800,000 years ago, we created the human half-breeds. We fight for the right to control the cosmos, the power of the Martians. Fighting under the dark suede flag will mow your people down like a harvest of wheat. Now, this seems to imply that humans had essentially evolved from Martian physiology, and that a civil war that occurred on the planet many years ago had led to a splinter group moving to Earth to start a new civilization. Still furious about their fragmented past and the creation of the human race, it appears as though the Martians that had remained on the planet were in essence waging a war against what they believed were genetic abnormalities born out of their own flesh. And this would also explain their overt hostility and curiosity towards mankind. 
Personally, I really enjoyed this film and think that a lot of people took it too seriously. I mean, in my eyes it's a black comedy and the film works perfectly within that genre. But when seen through a dramatic lens, I can understand why people didn't get it or didn't like it. Honestly, to me it's like going to see Avengers Endgame and being disappointed to see superheroes. It's not a fault of the film as it's being true to itself, but more of a reflection on viewers not being able to see past their preconceptions and expectations. It also didn't help that Mars Attacks was released around the same time as Independence Day, with a lot of people drawing unfair comparisons between the two films. Either way, I'm curious to hear what you guys thought about the film and uh, what some of your theories might be in relation to their connection to humanity, so please share this in the comments below. Well, that's all for today, folks. Big thanks to all of you guys who requested we take a look at the Martians featured in Mars Attacks. Don't forget to hit subscribe and click the notification icon to stay up to date on all my content. And if there's anything else you'd like to request, please don't hesitate to ask. As always, it's been a pleasure. Niat here with Film Comics Explained. Thanks for stopping by.